Hey everybody, hello and welcome. It's uh, good to be talking to you. Uh, today I wanted to show you kind of an, I want to say it's a bit of an old-fashioned plant. It's kind of hard to find in a lot of nurseries these days, at least where I live. It's kind of like the cast iron plant where it kind of fell out of fashion and hasn't been propagated as much, but it's so beautiful. So, just a sec. This guy over here, this is Aphalandra squarosa. Absolutely remarkable plant. Um, this guy over here is native to the Atlantic forests, uh, which kind of span all the way from north to south. There's a motorcycle over there. All the way from north to south Brazil. Uh, this plant over here is kind of unpredictable, I think is the right word for it. So it's in the Acanthaceae family. It's got this really beautiful variegation. It almost reminds me a little bit of a croton. And it's got this, it's, mine's not blooming for me right now, but it has this beautiful kind of tower-like uh, candlestick flower that's kind of in shades of orange and yellow that kind of extends a couple of inches above the growth point. In my experience, these guys are pretty hard to get to bloom, but the secret to getting them to bloom is warm temperatures, um, cool nights. So warm temperatures during the day, cool temperatures at night. Uh, big temperature difference and watering them a lot while they're blooming but holding off on water a little bit eh, there's a plane over there you guys everything's so like loud today anyways uh, where was I so yeah if you keep the temperature difference between day and night quite profound and uh, you kind of give them a lot of water it tends to coax them into blooming this is kind of a little bit like a calathea or a calathea in that you want to keep it evenly moist. So, I don't know if you can see here. And pardon the weeds, you guys, and I think there's a spider in there too. I've kind of neglected this a little bit, so there's a bit of vetch and clover in there. But you want to keep them quite wet. Uh, this is not a type of plant, even though it's a little bit succulent, it's not a type of plant that likes to dry out. It's got this really interesting pigmentation on the back there. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of licorice colored actually. Uh, you'll know your plant is healthy when it's got that color. Sometimes with people it gets a little bit rust colored, it gets a little bit kind of um, bronzy, that's generally a sign of bacterial disease. So you're going to want to have this kind of reddish, almost licorice color. Bottoms of the leaves are also super cool. Um, this is... <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing that I wanted to share, this over here is spider mite damage. Spider mites are actually architecture modifiers in these plants, which means that they disrupt the form of the plant. So I don't know if you can see here, this is what happens when you have spider mites. They, they kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They kind of distort the plant. These guys grow very, very well from cuttings. The best time to take cuttings is just when it starts to get hot outside. Um, you know, kind of like May, June, July. I cut the top of this plant off uh, around Victoria Day. So I think that's May the 16th. And it's grown this much already. And that was only literally a couple of leaves. So if I rotate... You can just see how readily it propagates. It's so easy to propagate. Very viable. As for feeding these guys, you'll notice you'll get bigger leaves if you give them a liquid feed fertilizer. That's what I did with this guy here, and they'll be shinier too. Now these guys are a total thrift magnet. As I've said before, thrips are really horrible. If you spray these with a little bit of dish soap mixed with a little bit of water mixed with neem oil, just routinely, it'll keep them, it acts as a leaf shine, but it also keeps the nymphs of the thrips away. So it's just a preventative thing. Usually I do 30% um, water, 30% soap, and 40% neem oil. That's kind of my solution. You can also use a little bit of hydrogen peroxide too. Uh, these guys like very, very well aerated soil. They don't like getting waterlogged, which is so interesting to me because they don't like drying out either. Uh, mature height is actually not that tall. They only grow to maybe four feet kind of maximum. Uh, they grow kind of like a cane. If you guys have ever seen a dumb cane or like a, uh, oh my gosh, what is that called? Diefenbachia. They kind of have a similar growth habit. If you want them to branch out a little bit more, like this guy is too, 
don't be shy. Feel free to cut off the top every once in a while and make a new plant. It's totally worth it. Uh, from what I understand, there's not any profound plant breeder's rights on these guys, so you can just go freely and um, propagate them and give them to your friends. You could sell them, whatever. Um, one thing that some people have told me about, and one thing that I've seen in person once, is sometimes you'll get little raised bumps kind of on the middles of the leaves, close to the midrib here. That's just edema, so basically the sugars within the leaves aren't circulating properly, and they produce these little pinnacles right on the top. Perfectly normal, a little unsightly. If you really don't like it, maybe just cut off the leaf, um, but it doesn't impact the health of the leaf. It's something that's very common in a lot of tropical plants. I had it on one of my um, cissus plants, my cissus discolor, my begonia vine, but um, just it doesn't hurt the plant. Another thing that I want to say about these guys is they are a little picky on water quality. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that the water that you give them doesn't have too much chlorine in them. Just something to be mindful of. And yeah, so that's kind of my basics of this particular plant. If they start going crispy, uh, that's because there's not enough humidity. You want to range for at least 50% humidity if you're growing them indoors. And that's the zebra plant. So thanks. Thanks for watching. Have a beautiful day. And yeah.